This is Carl at Dash RV, Detroit. I'm going to walk you through this uh, 2022 Mesa Ridge Light Model 281BH. Okay. All right, so this is a how-to video. I'm just going to show you some of the features and how they work. Okay, we're at the door side rear. And this right here is a quick connect for the LP system. So if you want to add a grill or something, you plug it in right there. Uh, this is uh, obviously regular scissor type stabilizers. Takes a three quarter inch crank, which comes with a trailer. You can also use a three quarter inch socket on a drill. Okay, and you have a two burner cooktop here. And uh, there's your uh, um, valve right there. Obviously, two, two burners. This is just a sprayer. This particular one plugs in right here. Although there may be another port on the other side. I'll keep my eyes open and point it out if there is. But uh, matter of fact, I'm sure there is. But there you go right there. And there's a regular AC refrigerator. You have a power awning with LED strip. You can see it's lit up right now. Outside speakers. This is your water heater. Now right now the water heater is empty. You can see there's the... the uh, um, drain right there and here's the cap for it so uh, right now it's empty and the, and it's bypassed so the valves in the back of it are bypassing it and there's antifreeze in the system so keep in mind that that uh, you're gonna have to fill this before you turn it on the switches to control are inside I'll show you that when we get in there but the thing is uh, you can never run this dry you always have to have water in it so make sure when you dewinterize the trailer and get ready for camping, you fill this up before you turn the, the water on, especially the, or the, the heat, the power on, I mean, especially the, uh, um, the heating element. That'll burn out very quickly if you, uh, if you were to run it with no water in it, okay? Uh, this is just service panel for the fridge. You don't have to go in there. That's your uh, vent for your furnace, just some power there. Now, this is the, the uh, range hood vent right here. So I just want to show you that there's a baffle in there. You can reach up and pull it with your thumb, whatever, and it'll free it up so it flaps freely. You always want the baffle to flap freely when you're venting. Uh, therefore, it'll, it'll actually vent out of the trailer. If you don't, it, it will not. So you want to uh, free it up. Uh, of course, when you're traveling, you're in storage, you can just push it and snap it shut. But remember to free it up when you're venting. All right. Now your, your marker lights are also also can be cameras they're pre-wired pre-prepped so you see this is just a dummy piece on here now but if you were to purchase a camera set um, you could actually plug it in here and uh, and you'll be able to see on the left side and the right side and also there's a backup camera so it would be three cameras and a monitor but that's a like I said that's an add-on thing if you're interested in doing that um, right here you have a, a three-quarter inch socket for your drill and you also have the the crank right here so um, that's for the stabilizers and also if your power tongue jack is to fail and you can't hitch or unhitch you can pull this plug out of here right on the top here you pull that plug and you can put the crank on there there's a three-quarter text you can put the crank on it or your drill whatever and you can raise it up and down that way all right yeah the hitch is a husky center line weight distribution hitch with a built-in sway control um, We'll show you how that operates when you pick up your trailer. So we have two LP tanks which are full. You have a deep cycle marine battery here. Okay. Um, there's the other prep for the other camera. Um, this is just your dump hose. You also get a, a reducer to reduce your power cord down to 20 to 20 amps. Uh, I'll show you that when we get down there, or show you the cord anyway. All right, so let's move down. Power cord, 30 amp, 30 feet long. Like I said, it with a reducer. Now this is your wa your water uh, dock here. So here's the second place you can hook up your sprayer. Okay. Now, um, if you look, you got a picture here. If this wa blue valve is in the in the vertical position, it's city water. If it's in a horizontal position, you're filling your fresh water tank. So your hose, city water hose, goes right on here. It's set for city water. You just turn it on, and everything in your trailer will work. All the plumbing will work. Now, if you go to a campground that doesn't have plumbing on the campsites, you can change it this way. You still have the hose on there, and this that will fill your fresh water tank. Uh, therefore, you can carry the water with you and use your onboard pump to pump the uh, um, to pump the water out of the tank. So, um, you know, some of the older state parks, for example, if you if you've been to them, they have a, like they don't have plumbing on the campsites, but they'll have a, a fill station when you get in first get in through the gates of the campground. That, that's where you would fill it up, so it's that sort of situation, okay? 
Um, you only think about the fresh water tank if you don't have city water. Now this one right here is uh, the black tank flush. So after you dump your, your black tank, you know, you dump the, the black, which is toilet water and waste, and then the gray, which is sink and shower water. Always dump the black first because it's the dirtiest. Um, so you leave your valve open like it states here. You leave the, the dump valve open. Put the hose out here, turn it on, and it'll spray the inside of your tank out and spray off the sensor so you get a good, accurate reading. All right. So there's your backup camera mount. It's pre-wired, like I said. It's an option. Um, and you have a ladder here, which is great because the manufacturer states you inspect your roof every 90 days. So someone needs to go up there and every 90 days and check the seal on the roof, check the seals, make sure there's no cracking or separation, make sure there's no damage to any of, any of the attachments or it's the roofing material you know, damaged by low branches or road debris flipping up there, whatever. So make sure you uh, keep after that. That's an important thing to do. Okay, so... Let's go inside here. Okay, so this is your slide room right here. This is your power awning right here. Never leave the awning out unattended. Always roll it in when you're not going to beat the campsite. This is your water panel here. So you got your, your water pump switch here. Remember the water pump pumps water out of the fresh water tank. It also is used when you winterize the trailer. And then you can light your water heater on gas. There, electric there. Remember what I said about making sure the tank is full before you turn this on and then you check your levels here okay it's pretty self-evident it graduates up in one third increments so okay coming around the corner here this is your sound bar um it has an fm radio you can, you can stream off a usb here it has bluetooth so you can hook up wireless to your phone or tablet to go into the system this, this hdmi is an in so if you have like a portable blu-ray player you can plug it straight into the system right there um, it has two speaker zones. One is inside the trailer, two is outside the trailer. So there's a lot you can do with it. It's, uh, it's, uh, it's got really good sound for, for what we have here. We're camping in the trailer, so it's excellent. So, okay, so the, and the TV works like any other TV. Now, this is your um, refrigerator. It's a gas absorption refrigerator, meaning it runs on 110 AC or LP gas. So you se select the mode right here. If we could do it, I might have to shut it off to get it to behave here. Let me do that. So you hold it on the button to shut it off. Here we go, like so. And there you see it's automatic electricity. You got an A plus a picture of the plug. Now that's the most common way to, to set your uh, refrigerator. It mean, basically, it means that it automatically seeks out electricity. If it can't find the electricity, um, it'll automatically switch over to gas. So therefore, if, you're, if you leave your campground and you're gone for the day and it's, uh, you have a power failure at the campground, it'll sense that and it'll automatically switch over to gas so you don't spoil your food. So that's the most common position to keep it in. You can, you can, you can keep putting the, pushing the mode button and you can change it to always, always elect or electricity all the time or gas all the time, but auto is the best way to go, okay? So, microwave works like any other microwave. This is the range hood vent I told you about. Um, you got a light here, and then you got your fan. Now, the fan, um, remember to open the baffle on your, your vent on the outside when you're running the fan. So, your range right here, <coughs> you know, you have three knobs and three burners. Obviously, this is the sparker. You can turn it clockwise and spark it. Um, this is the, um, oven knob here so basically you're just going to go like this that's it to do the oven there's a pile of light down at the bottom i can spark it maybe you can see it back there there you go so you're just going to go to the oven knob you go to pilot you depress it keep it depressed you spark it till it lights hold it for another 10 seconds or so and and uh till the pilot light lights uh then you can select the temperature when you shut it down the pilot light goes out so you gotta you've got to um let me put this down. You gotta relight the pilot light each time you use the other. Okay. This is your power converter. This converts AC to DC power. So you can see when you're plugged in, you've, you've got AC power on this side, and there's there's circuit breakers like you see at home, plus they're labeled. Then the power is converted to 12 volt DC on this side. You got a couple of breakers and, and the rest are 12 volt fuses, right? So it converts AC to, to DC, and then the DC sent out to your to your to your trailer. 
So it's also a, a, a battery tender. So it'll sense how much energy your battery needs and it'll always keep it charged. Um, it'll it'll send as much as, it, as needed. If, it's, if your battery's topped off, it'll just trickle a couple amps to maintain it. If it's uh, low, it'll send 10 amps or whatever, whatever it needs, okay? So this charges your battery when you're plugged in, and then your car's, your, your, your tow vehicle's alternator will charge the battery when you're pulling it down the road. Okay. Over here, while we're down here, this is your carbon monoxide and LP gas detector right here. So it should always be green if it's not get it serviced. Um, it'll detect carbon monoxide and LP gas buildup. Also, if it beeps very slowly, the same tone but very slowly is telling you that your, your battery's low. So it's also a low battery alarm. Um, but keep in mind, if, the, if it goes off, you take everybody outside, leave the door open, shut the gas off, figure out what's going on, okay? And if it's not green, get it serviced. Okay. Your thermostat is really simple. You just push, scroll through the modes. Um, when you're running the furnace, like we are now, you want the fan off, or else it'll run the fan in the, uh, in the air conditioner there. So that's the only thing to remember. Um, it's very simple, very self-evident. Okay, let me look here. So your table can drop down onto the cleats here. We can, you can turn it into a bed. This is a hide -a bed You can pull the cushions off and fold it out. You just grab it right here and fold it out. It's a, a three-panel bed. Um, your bedroom is all pretty straightforward. You've got a, you've got a bagging plate for a TV mount here, and that's where you would hook it up right there, of course. And then come in this way. Obviously you have your bathroom. Sink and the shower work like any other sink and shower, of course. The only thing to know is always run the, when you, when you take a shower, always run the, the vent to pull the humidity out. So, this is the flush pedal right here. Uh, the black tank is directly below. Right, you can see a little antifreeze coming out there. So that's the black tank. So, when you talk about dry, they're talking about the black tank. So, let's say you pull into the campground, you hook up your power and your water, right? Then you'll come in here and you'll put one dose of chemical in the bowl. Then you'll step on the pedal and water will come swirling out, wash the chemical into the black tank along with the water. You stand on it long enough to put about a gallon of water in the black tank, and then you're all set. Um, you never use it dry. You always have to have chemical and water in it, otherwise the smell will be terrible and uh, it can also get clogged up. So keep that in mind. Okay, so let me look around and see if I forgot anything here. I think I pretty much got it all. This is a GFCI here. Keep in mind all the plugs in the trailer are wired to a GFCI. Okay. Yeah, I believe that's it. So, okay, I want to thank you for purchasing your trailer here at National RV Detroit. Um, please remember what I said about inspecting the roof every 90 days, that's important. Um, and also, right, like I stated, the, this trailer is winterized right now. The water heater is empty, it's bypassed, and there's antifreeze in the system, okay? Thank you.